Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining us today. Well, I've got a pistol video for you here today, and we're going to be taking a look at the Smith & Wesson 642. This is a airweight J-frame and 38 Special plus P. The J-frame series of revolvers uh, have been around since the 1950s. So a lot of people are familiar with them. And I've used a lot of different revolvers. I tend to actually lean very strongly towards some of these smaller revolvers just because they're so easy and comfortable to carry. So is the 642 Airweight a good option? Well, we're going to find out in just a minute. All right, once again, welcome back. Thanks for being with us. If this is your first time coming to the channel, well, welcome aboard. Thanks for being with us. If you're a returning viewer, we appreciate your loyalty and your support. In either case, if you've been watching the videos and you haven't had a chance to subscribe yet, if you like our content, please consider doing so. Uh, you can do it just by hitting that button in the lower corner of your computer screen there. If you're on a mobile device, you can scroll down below the video and hit the subscribe button there. Um, it helps us out a lot, and we really, really appreciate it. So jumping right in, okay. So anyone who has got any familiarity with revolvers at all is probably already familiar with the J-frame uh, series of Smith & Wesson revolvers. They've been around since the 50s, and there's been a lot of varieties of this revolver, different calibers, features, options, all that kind of thing. So focusing on this one, um, we're going to do what we always like to start off doing here, which is a little size comparison. What I've decided to compare it to is a revolver that actually was made as a direct competitor to the little J-frame there, and that is the Ruger LCR. Now, as you can see by looking at these two, they're very similar, you know, in size in most areas. Just looking at it here, you've got a little bit more grip on the LCR and it doesn't seem like much and on paper it's very very minimal but when you actually have it on the body it does make the difference between you know having a little bit sticking up you know when you have this in the belt line depends on how you're going to carry it but if you are carrying this in your in your waistband it might make a difference how much of this grip that you've got sitting up now of course if you look over the top you can see that they're you know very similar as far as the thickness and then you can see looking at the back okay these are virtually identical you just got a bigger fatter grip on the LCR and of course we do this type of comparison simply to give you an idea of what it's going to be like to carry this firearm on the body because comfort is one of your primary considerations when you're choosing a concealed carry firearm all right, so we're going to jump into the features here, but before we do, we want to take a moment to thank our friends over at Don's Weaponry for providing us this beautiful example of this Smith & Wesson 642 Airweight and 38 Special Plus P. Don's Weaponry is a huge supporter of firearm safety and education, and we can't thank them enough for their support. So taking a look at this thing. There's going to be a lot of features that you're used to seeing that are familiar on a um, small revolver. But just getting technical here for a second, um, they call it the air weight. Um, the idea, of course, was to use modern materials to try to lighten this to make it a very comfortable firearm to carry. That was the whole idea. And what they've done is the frame of this firearm is an aluminum alloy. And then, of course, your barrel and your cylinder are both stainless steel. By having that alloy frame, they really got the weight down on this thing, and uh, which is only 14.4 ounces, which is pretty good. Like I say, um, it is a plus P. So those of you that are concerned about being able to carry uh, that type of ammunition, you'll be able to do it. We're going to do a quick safety check here while we're in the features, which is pretty simple. You can see our cylinder is empty, so we will put that back just the way we found it. So I guess we'll start right there. Obviously there's your cylinder release right there on the side. Um, pretty standard for a Smith & Wesson. Um, your grip, you've got this basic rubberized grip and um, to me, this is more than adequate. I don't even think I would really want anything different than this on a carry gun and let me tell you why. There are firearms I have that have all kinds of fancy, you know, you know, wooden grips and, and I've got certain firearms. I've got, you know, um, 
G10 grips, and, and there's a lot of fancy things you can use. For a small firearm like this, what I'm primarily interested in is just keeping a good grip on the firearm. And a simple rubber grip like this with a little texturing is so easy to hang on to that to me this is about the best thing you can have on a small gun like this. It's not fancy, but it's very effective, and that's what I'm looking for. So obviously, this is a hammerless um, revolver. It's a double action only. So obviously, you got to pull the trigger clean through every single time there. And that, to me, is actually a plus, not a minus. There's a lot of people that, you know, colleagues and other shooters that I'm around, that they won't carry anything that doesn't have an exposed hammer to allow them to, you know, put the firearm into single action. And I understand that. It's just a matter of preferences. But for me, I really prefer no hammer, and I'll tell you why. As a carry gun, this may be in the waistband. It may be in my pocket. There's a lot of different ways I'll carry a small revolver like this, depending on how I'm dressed. But I don't want it to be difficult to get out or snag. And plus, if a hammer is not on the outside, of course, that's a it, it kind of removes another question mark for safety because there is nothing to snag. So as long as you have the firearm inside of a decent you know, holster that covers your trigger, you should be in pretty good shape. So anyway, the trigger on this, uh, if you have shot Smith & Wesson revolvers before, you may notice their triggers to me are all kind of similar on these little J frames. You know, they take quite a bit and they seem to just break right at the end there, kind of unexpectedly. And you have to train through that. Now, it's not a bad thing. I think the trigger on the J-frame revolvers is really good. You just have to get used to it. And the reason why is because when you, and we'll cover this more in the range section, but just looking at the Ruger LCR for comparison, it stacks up a little bit smoother. And so you've got kind of a predictable and they're both good triggers. They're just a little bit different. And this one's a little bit longer. So if you're using one of them versus the other, you might have to, you know, get used to how one of them, you know, how one of them is going to um, pull through the weight, the feel of that trigger is going to be a little bit different between them. Um, on your sights, of course, for most of these little revolvers, this is what you get. You get a little ramp a little notch cut out in the top here and of course you have a built-in little ramp site there on the front now this isn't fancy of course and this isn't what i would prefer but for what it is you don't really need a fancy sight because this is definitely a very short distance close quarters type uh, defensive weapon um, but even a dot or something on the front sight would have been you know better than nothing but this is typical though you know, if you look at the Ruger LCR, the only difference is that they have painted the ramp white, which is something that, you know, Smith could have done. But like I say, it's not a deal breaker. But as you can see, it's a lot easier to pick up that little white part of the ramp than it being all silver. But once again, you're going to be using this, obviously, in a close-up situation. So that's not going to be that big of a deal. But like I say, it's pretty simple. Pretty basic, like most small revolvers. And that's going to be your summary of your features. So talking about the range. Now this little gun is, you have to excuse me, it's probably still a little dirty um, because of the amount of ammo that's been put through this gun here recently. Um, I really wanted to sort of verify some of what I've heard. Um, because this is actually my first Smith & Wesson um, airweight revolver. I've got some larger Smith & Wesson pistols that I've shot and I love. And they're big heavy guns. And of course, big heavy guns, there's trade-offs, you know. A heavy gun handles the, um, the power of the round really well, but of course it adds extra weight to the gun. And I've heard some people say that, well, you know, this thing is so light that when you, when you shoot it a lot, it's just really going to beat you up. I've even seen some people that publish some videos where they um, had some cuts and damage to their hand, like they really uh, got a lot of recoil and injury to their their hand. I guess somehow when they were holding it, maybe they went high up on the on the grip. 
I didn't have any experience like that, and I'll show you what I ran through the firearm to give you an idea of whether I should have. So just for practice, um, I have this Federal here. This is a 130 grain FMJ. Um, the very first day on the range, um, I shot an entire box of this through the firearm. And yes, you can tell that you are shooting and you can feel the energy. But like I say, this rubber grip to me, as long as you have a good firm grip, and I do mean firm because this, this firearm is definitely going to react because of its light frame to the ammunition. But if you have a good grip and whatever that means for you, I don't think you're going to experience that many problems. Now, I also um, use some of the gold dot here. This is 38 special plus P135 grain uh, defensive ammo. And this obviously had quite a bit more sting than the Federal, but it was still very manageable. And just for the sake of seeing what it was like, I also have some of this 38 special uh, Hornady critical defense. I ran some of this too. And this was actually very pleasant to shoot through the firearm. So, you know, if you are carrying this firearm and you want it to be a little bit nicer as far as the energy you feel in your hand, that this is a pretty good uh, round to put in the firearm. I thought so anyway. But for me, I'm actually carrying the gold dot because the gold dot is a very good performing cartridge. Um, for a little small snubby revolver, I get very good results as far as accuracy. And, you know, I don't shoot too much at a time when I practice, you know, I may shoot a box of this at the range at one time, because I'll mostly shoot my regular practice ammo to kind of mix things up a little bit. I got really good results just taking my time, but once again, um, I always practice at around 21 feet. That's the defensive range that I, I don't feel like I need to be practicing beyond that for most situations if you have an actual encounter um, if if the potential problem that you're facing is further away than that then it seems like you've got other options besides having to go to your firearm anyway so I tried to practice at that range and at 21 feet um, I was very happy with my results like I say you have to take your time and get used to the trigger squeeze but um, I didn't have any trouble producing groups that made me happy with this little gun and it didn't beat me up the way a lot of people told me it would beat me up because I feel like the rubber grip is adequate. And if you have a good grip on the firearm, you shouldn't have any problems. So I thought it performed well at the range. And I think with practice, anybody could be comfortable with this revolver. So what's it like to carry the little Smith & Wesson 642 air weight? Well, in a word, very, very comfortable and I did that several different ways, but let me kind of highlight a few that uh, most of you can readily relate to. There's several holsters I have for this gun. Uh, now, I have a lot of small revolvers, but the ones I got specifically for this gun, um, the first one I got was this little uh, DeSantis gun hide here. Now, DeSantis has a ton of these little holsters on their site. Um, or even your local gun shop has probably got some like this. But if you just go to DeSantis's website and take a look and put in like the J-frame designation or even the 642, you'll see little dozens of these come up. But as you can see, the firearm just fits so neatly and completely into this. And it's got a pretty strong steel clip. It fits very securely on the belt. But one thing I really like is the leather comes up right to where the grip starts so if you have this inside the waistband it transitions off your body you've got smooth leather and then it goes into the smooth rubber of the grip so it's very nice to carry on the body uh, another option that i have that i really like um, galco gun letter same thing if you go to galco's site and put in a little j frame or even the 642 you'll get dozens of these little holsters here this is leather and it has a plastic clip but the plastic clip is pretty beefy, and I've used this holster a lot. There's a ton of wear on this thing. So if this clip was going to have a problem or not hold up, I would definitely know it by now. But it's the same thing. It's a real similar shape. 
and you have the same benefit where you have the nice leather against the body and then it transitions into the grip so as far as what you feel it's really really nice and to me it's really kind of a tie and comfort between those two holsters now a lot of people are not okay with that kind of holster they would like a lot more retention and there's a lot of great options out there too um, i've actually got a freedom carry which is a crossbreed um, version and um, i can't wait to get that in because it's got you know more of a retention style because it's a kydex and leather holster and i'm going to give that a roar but carrying this consistently for you know a couple of weeks with the holsters i showed you and i also tried some pocket carry with a sticky also very handy because if you have it inside of something like a sticky even a desantis like i mentioned they have a little pocket with has little paddles where it'll stick straight up in your pocket and you can draw it very easily from the pocket but using all the methods that i talked about it's a it's so light and comfortable that you'll you know you won't really think about having the firearm on you and i guess the um the air weight, you know, the lighter frame, that speaks to how good of a job they've done of getting that thing down to that 14.4 ounces. So extremely comfortable for carry. So overall impressions of the Smith & Wesson Model 642 air weight J frame and 38 special plus P. Well, for me, I have to say that I've made it clear that I'm a fan of you know, small, light, compact firearms for the specific reason that I'm more likely to carry it. And of course, if you're a responsible gun owner, your hope should be that you never need to remove the firearm from the holster, that you never have to use this. And that's the way I am. I feel confident that if I am ever in a situation where I have to bring my firearm out in a defensive manner, that a five-shot revolver will be more than adequate even if it's just a matter of, you know, presenting your firearm and the threat changing their mind. And, and that's, of course, is even better if you get threatened and you don't have to do anything. No matter how it goes, I feel like a five-shot revolver is more than adequate for any type of situation like this. If you study the data that's available on most self-defense shootings, you will find that most of those shootings are over in less than three shots. Well, three shots or less is what they say, inside of three meters and over in about three seconds. That being the case, well, you've got two more rounds than the data calls for. Now, obviously, you know, there are a ton of situations that fall outside of those rules. I get that. And as a gun owner, as a responsible um, concealed carry firearm owner, only you know what you're comfortable with. Only you know what's going to make you feel safe to carry. So that's what you need to go with. And if a five-shot revolver is a no-go for you, then don't do it. But for me, and for a lot of people, comfort is a primary concern. And I definitely feel comfortable with five rounds of 38 Special um, backing me up if need be. Now... The J-Frame revolvers have been around for a long time. They've got a very good reputation, and the quality of the Smith & Wesson firearms, I believe, is very good. It has been with all my others. Price, the MSRP on this particular revolver is $532. That's pretty close to what I see them being sold for right now. And with the gun market being you know, very unpredictable right now, and prices seem to continue to rise, I thought that was pretty good that you can still get this for around what you should. So you can spend a whole lot more on a firearm and not necessarily get more. I think that reliability and comfort are huge. And I believe that the 642 delivers big time in those uh, situations. And once again, a double action only hammerless revolver it's not only a good option as far as simplicity, but it's also a very good option um, in a lot of cases for new shooters because you remove a lot of question marks for safety. Now, ultimately, as a new shooter, you need to go in and try as many things as possible to find out whether a revolver is even a good option for you, period. You know, because you need to use what you can perform with the best. 
You try many things, autos, revolvers, whatever you can comfortably, you know, responsibly, you know, technically handle correctly and shoot well is what you need. But I think that if you can handle a revolver, a small revolver, and you can do it with proficiency, something like this takes away a lot of question marks for safety. So overall, I think it's a great choice. I can understand why, after all this time, even with all these other options on the market, that these still sell so well. And so it's certainly a good recommendation from me. I have nothing bad to say about this firearm at all. So there you have it. Okay. Well, that's going to do it for today. Uh, we appreciate everybody being with us today once again. And uh, we're going to be back very soon with another video for you. So until then, everybody, please be safe and have a great day. Thank you.